Okay, today I want to talk about not allowing recovery to become a hobby and what I mean by that. If you're a person listening to this and you've been in recovery for over a year, right? And by in recovery, I mean really trying to recover for over a year. And you don't feel like you've really come that far in the last, I don't know, a few months. You feel like you've become stagnant. You may be allowing recovery to become a hobby. Why do people want recovery to become a hobby? Well, there's a few ideas that come to mind when I think about this. One may be that there's a community, right? There's this community in the eating disorder world where you can, you know, write comments or you can ask questions or you can get reassurance from other like-minded people who struggle with the same thing and it feels comforting and it feels like you're connected in some way. So I think that's one reason why sometimes people will kind of be in recovery perpetually forever, it seems like, but not really making much progress. Um, another reason that someone may, it may become a hobby unintentionally is they're not fully committed to recovery. So they're kind of doing that like one foot in, one foot out for an extended period of time. And before they know it, it's like they're still in recovery years later and they're still trying to recover years later. And they never really put their head down and just got to work and just really went for it. Recovery doesn't need to and should not take forever. Recovery, if you are really, really determined to get there, should be something that you want to get through as fast as you can. Now, obviously it takes time for our brains to rewire. We get that, right? You can't do that overnight. And it does take a lot of work. However, the faster and the more aggressive that you can go at this, the quicker you'll find yourself free from it. So I think sometimes, oh, and, and another reason, a big, big, big one that came to mind when I was thinking about um, this topic was because if it's not a hobby and you're just doing it like this, this, you know, event it's the thing that you're going into and you're really giving it your all and then it can end well then i think when people don't understand the concept of unrestricted eating being forever they think whoa, 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 whoa no i don't want this to end i do not want to drag this on for as long as i can and then it becomes again like a hobby something that you're just continuously working on continuously going back to Whenever you're bored or you have downtime or you feel like you just don't know what to do with your life, you're just going to revert back to this idea of you being in recovery. So if this is you listening to this video. Okay, so what are some things that you can do to end this hobby and ultimately get to the end of your recovery so you can go on and move your life? Well, a couple of things you would need to look at. How well am I doing at really going for it when it comes to eating unrestrictedly? How committed am I to actually doing that? How much am I still holding back? What are the things or the areas that I find that I'm still really restricting in? Am I still delaying meals? Am I still um, having to wait certain amounts of time before I can eat um, in between my meals? Am I even eating in between my meals? Am I still feeling like I have to go out and do that little walk? Am I still puttering around my house? Am I still um, you know, choosing the safer option. Maybe it's not the safest option and it's something you weren't eating before you started recovery, but you're still just kind of reverting back to those things that you've challenged and felt really challenging initially, but now they're starting to feel a little more comfortable and you're not kind of moving forward with something now more scary. <clears throat> so ask yourself, how well are you doing? Like genuinely take a minute and assess where you're at with eating unrestrictedly. Zero being I'm still heavily restricting and only eating safe foods. 10 is like, I am nailing it. Like I am crushing unrestricted eating. There's literally nothing that I'm not eating that I want to eat or that I'm thinking about eating. Um, and then with movement, how well am I doing with movement? Yeah, maybe you've stopped formal exercise, which is great, but have you completely stopped all your walks? Have you completely stopped all your stretching routines and your yoga and you're going up and down the stairs more than you actually need to and walking up and down aisles in the store and walking to the store? Have you stopped all of those things? <clears throat> because if you haven't stopped all of those things and you're still restricting in the food category, recovery, if it hasn't already, will become a hobby that you're going to have to deal with the rest of your life. And for some people that feels comforting, but for the people that really, really, really want to recover, it sounds awful, right? It sounds like... No, please, I just wanna get through this. So really commit, first assess where you're at and then really make those commitments that you know you need to. And like I talked about yesterday, as far as like New Year's resolutions or setting goals in recovery, right? And I talked about this too with clients, like, yeah, I can sit there with a client and talk to them and be like, yeah, you need to eat more this week. Make sure you're, you know, you're really getting to eat unrestrictedly and make sure you rest. And it's like, okay, well, let's talk about specifically 
where do you feel like you're still struggling with food? Where do you still feel like you're definitely letting your eating disorder have a say in what you're choosing to eat or when you're eating? And then we kind of talk through that. It's like, okay, so now what are we going to do differently? An example. Well, yes, I can eat ice cream now. Ask a client, you know, how are you doing? Well, I'm eating ice cream at, after dinner, um, you know, but only after dinner. And it's this one kind that I'm only allowing myself to eat in this one bowl. And it's like, okay, well, let's make a goal this week that you're going to have different brands of ice cream, the scariest brands, right? Maybe it's the Ben and Jerry's, the Hagen does, the like really good, yummy, chunky ice cream. And you're going to have that earlier in the day and then also have it again after dinner. So it's a little bit more specific rather than just eat unrestrictedly. And you can do that kind of exercise with yourself. You can ask yourself that question. Where am I, where are those sticking points for you? Where am I still struggling with? Okay. How am I going to have a plan of action to actually mitigate this, to change this? Um, and I call that just kind of like troubleshooting in your recovery. You look at, okay, where am I doing? Well, good. Keep doing it. What am I struggling with? Okay. Now I need to make adjustments. <clears throat> so that's my message today. Do not, do not, do not allow recovery to become a hobby. And if it is, snap yourself out of that. There's so many more interesting hobbies that you can pursue in your life. Okay, have a great day. Bye.